What's going on everybody, Jay Howe here, and in this Diablo 3 monk build for patch 2.6.8, we're going to talk about utilizing the new set from last season, moving into season 20, and now with the season 20 buff, why this is topping the charts for the monk. We'll get into the skills, the gear, and everything you'll need to know to get this build going, so let's get into it. For Season 20, you know that Season 19 introduced the new Monk set, which means that this is carrying over into Season 20. And with that, it means that you're able to take advantage of the Kanai's Cube buff that you can utilize all three slots for whatever you want. We'll get into that in a moment. First, let's take a look at the skills. This is going to be primarily cold focus. So Cyclone Strike with Wall of Wind. You want to be able to pull things into you. Also, you want to utilize the enemies are frozen for 1.5 seconds after being pulled in. This can help proc a few things later. There's going to be different ways that Cyclone Strike will be used, so we'll get into that later. Your primary damage, of course, is Tempest Rush, and you're going to be using Flurry. Getting this cold damage running through enemies, this is going to bring you the highest bang for your buck in terms of damage. So Tempest Rush with Fury to be able to hit everything along the way. Now Sweeping Wind, we know that there are buffs around Sweeping Wind, keeping this stacked up and helping things out. Also, you're going to be freezing targets if after you've hit them with three consecutive seconds. So there are different ways, again, to utilize and to proc to get that bonus damage on a lot of different things. Of course, the set bonus is going to help impact everything. Sweeping Wind will have a 100% uptime, pretty easy to keep up. Serenity with Ascension. You're enveloped in a protective shield that absorbs all incoming damage for four seconds. Now, that part we need to focus on because there is a certain threshold for cooldown reduction we'll get into on the gear where Serenity will be used in the brief period that Epiphany is off cooldown. If you have really high cooldown reduction, reasonably you can use this twice or at least used it once before you have that downtime of Epiphany, then you can use it again. Although that can be a little tricky and that does take some time to get used to, but this will be 100% necessary to use during the Epiphany downtime. And because of that, Epiphany with Desert Shroud, reducing damage taken by 50% is its primary goal. You're gonna have a lot of different ways to reduce damage for the monk, but Epiphany is the main one that you wanna have up as much as possible. There is a way to kind of get there, but overall you can utilize your Serenity during that brief Epiphany downtime, but a lot of it is focused on a lot of cooldown reduction to pair this together, but Epiphany is the main one that you have to make sure you have up. Mantra of Salvation with Agility, this does give you the passive of the resist to all elements and increased dodge. You can activate this. Uh, to get increased resistance, you and nearby allies to get an additional 20%. So this can come through in a matter of time when you do need it. So you can definitely utilize this. You'll have enough resource cost reduction. But again, it's just another button to press. But your main focus is on the Epiphany and Serenity for your defensive abilities. Everything else, when it comes to your Sweeping Wind, Cyclone Strike, and Tempest Rush, are going to be focused on the damage side of things, of course, with some other caveats there. When it comes to the passive buffs, there are two that are necessary if you're pushing high greater rifts. Beacon of Etar, we already mentioned that cooldown reduction is at a premium here. So Beacon of Etar and then near death experience. Now there are some changes you can go to. I was running the Guardian's Path because I didn't really have that single resistance in the secondary slot. So if you have a lot of the same resistance in that secondary slot, of course, Harmony now looks a lot more appealing so that you have greater toughness, more single target, or more all resist as a result. If you don't have that on your gear, the Guardian's Path is a nice backup that I've been running as well. There are some different variations that you could also go into, including something like Sixth Sense which gives you more reduction to non-physical damage taken. So there are different ways to mitigate damage. With that being said, Seize the Initiative is another passive. So the four passives that I've been running on the PTR that have worked consist of Beacon of Etar, Near Death Experience, and Seize the Initiative. Seize the Initiative, dealing damage to enemies above 75% life, increase attack speed, which means more DPS. So I have the three basically defensive and cooldown abilities and then one offensive but you can just as easily make this sixth sense and then switch out the guardian's path or harmony whichever one benefits you the most it's more about are you geared enough to 
be able to supply extra damage? Do you have the rotations? Do you have the cooldowns? Because to push high greater rifts, eventually you're going to have to take some risks. And by taking risks, sometimes that means not going full defensive. So you have to balance these. But there are two definites of Beacon of, Ecar, Be Beacon of Etar, near-death experience. And of course, whether it's Harmony or the Guardian's Path, or both if you choose, but also Sixth Sense is something to consider. So there are a lot of good options for your passives, but Beacon of Etar, of course, the number one. Now let's focus on the gear because this is based around the patterns of justice. You will be utilizing five pieces of this with the Ring of Royal Grandeur in your cube. You could, of course, wear this, but it is going to be better suited in your cube. Now, before you decide on which five pieces you want, four pieces that will be definitely set are your gloves, shoulders, helm, and chest. I say that because you're also going to be running the Captain Crimson set, which consists of legs, feet, and waist, using only two of those because you'll get the ring bonus as well there. So you have to decide on basically on your rolls, whether it's going to be the belt and pants, the belt and shoes, or so on and so forth. Just two-piece combination of that. Whichever slot is open is where you'll put the Patterns of Justice, preferably your better statted gear. Now with this, the two-piece bonus Sweeping Wind gains the effect of every rune, and movement speed is increased by 5% for each stack of Sweeping Wind. Now, going back to the skills part of this, I said you're going to be focusing on Cold, and Cold is the way to go, which is why Wall of Wind was talked about there. So you'll get the benefit of every rune, but this is going to be a cold geared one, which means you'll focus that on your gear as well when it comes to your bracers and your amulet. But of course, you will be getting the bonus here and the extra movement speed. Four piece bonus attacking with Tempest Rush reduces your damage taken by 50% and increases spirit regeneration by 50, which means that you can now continue to cast the Tempest Rush. You don't have to worry about dropping off with your spirit and you can continue to just go through and mow people down. Plus that's of course reducing your damage, which is pretty important. For your six piece bonus, Hitting with Tempest Rush while Sweeping Wind is active increases the size of Sweeping Wind and also increases all damage dealt by 15,000. A very easy thing to proc, you'll notice you'll have a giant circle around you for quite some time. If that ever drops, just reactivate it. That shouldn't happen too often in Greater Rifts because the density is there. If you're in regular Rifts, there might be a gap and you'll have to reactivate that from time to time. No big deal, but getting that extra bonus is what it's all about. To briefly touch on the Captain Crimson set, again, it's all about wherever your better stats are, but the two-piece bonus from this, getting cooldown reduction, the extra 20% cooldown reduction, and the resource cost reduction, which pairs directly into your three-piece bonus, which is damage dealt is increased by your percentage of cooldown reduction, and damage taken is reduced by your percentage of cost reduction, which means that the higher the cooldown reduction, which is needed for your defensive abilities, also is going to help benefit your damage and the resource cost reduction for what it's worth is going to help out as well. For your weapons, the Istvan's Paired Blades, known as the Little Rogue and the Slanderer, are just going to be the, the extra added boost that you're going to have for damage every time you spend primary resource, which is your Tempest Fury. You'll gain 6% increased attack speed, damage, and armor for 5 seconds, stacking up to 5 times. This shouldn't need any real explanation because all of that is pretty self-explanatory, but both of these are good. I will say that you do need, again, Based on cooldown reduction, you will need cooldown reduction on both weapons. This is where you can get 10% cooldown reduction and make things a lot easier. When it goes back to your patterns of justice, cooldown reduction in places like your shoulders, your gloves, both of your weapons, of course the Captain Crimson set, and then also your rings. There is a small window in that upper 60% where the forgiveness is kind of there on your downtime from your epiphany into your ascension i touched on this earlier but you will need a substantial amount of cooldown reduction which will definitely help to the survivability of this build with the diamond in the helmet and of course the flavor of time which we'll get into in a minute but getting cooldown reduction basically every place that you can get it is going to help out a lot and with the flavor of time pylon effects last twice as long this has cooldown reduction on it Getting this, if you can get cold skill damage, crit hit damage, crit hit chance, cooldown reduction, you've hit the lottery with the socket there as well. If not, the cooldown reduction, the crit, and the socket are going to be very good, but the elemental damage can also help out as well there, but the flavor of time fits into this build so incredibly well. 
Not only that, but when you start to look at what the pylons do for this build as a whole, of course they're beneficial to every single class, but when you start thinking about getting the cooldown reduction, all of that different stuff can really help out the monk to really push high greater rifts pretty substantially with this amulet. It should come as no surprise, Caesar's Memento for your Brazers. Enemies take up to 800% increased damage from your Tempest Rush for five seconds after you hit them with a blind freeze or stun. Now let's rewind a little bit because that's exactly what we were talking about with this build overall. Master of Wind getting the freeze, Cyclone Strike of course, pulling targets in and then freezing them as well. You will see me from time to time activate the Cyclone Strike to make sure and just get that proc if something hadn't already moved or a mob was just out of range. I'll use that Cyclone Strike to make sure and get them in to get that bonus damage. However, the size of everything, the way everything works, it's not hard to utilize this at all. Cyclone Strike can just be to reposition some of those minions, move over to maybe an aura buff to where you can get that bonus damage, bring them in on top of you. There's different ways to utilize Cyclone Strike, but overall you are gonna find the greater benefit overall from everything that you're using so far. Before we go any further, of course, in the cube, you're also gonna have the Wan Kim Lao, which is going to activate Cyclone Strike when you hit with the Tempest Rush. This isn't always a guarantee, so sometimes you will need to use it. We'll get into that in a second. First, let's focus on the jewelry. I already mentioned the Ring of Royal Grandeur. If you happen to have a better statted Ring of Royal Grandeur, you can wear it and then put a Unity into the cube or vice versa. Getting a Unity is going to be part of this build at the higher levels. You can opt for something else. However, this has been the general consensus so far on the PTR. Just getting the damage taken split between wearers of this item. This is, of course, if you are running solo so that you can put the other Unity onto your Templar that has the Relic of Not Dying, thus making this much more valuable. Of course, getting the crit chance, crit damage, and the socket is going to be good. If you get cooldown reduction, that's great. Uh, but that is going to be the unity and then of course the convention of elements cooldown reduction crit chance crit damage and a socket plus a nice secondary effect again it's going to help you push that high greater rift damage with the convention of elements it seems to fit into every build still and this is no different as i just mentioned in the kanai's cube the wan kim lao hitting with tempest rush will activate cyclone strike and both skills deal 600 percent increased damage which means that they have that natural synergy between the Tempest Rush and the Cyclone Strike. There is going to be a, a few times where you will need to reactivate the Cyclone Strike to reposition, to reactivate certain parts of your build to get that bonus damage. It's no surprise you can use this directly on top. You'll see a big increase in damage because you're going to get bonus on both of them and the Wan Kim Lao fits nicely. Now because this is season 20, if you are running non-season, this doesn't really fit the same. Now with season 20, using the Kanai's Cube to have any combination of double weapon or armor or whatever you want, you can now add the balance in here. The damage of Tempest Rush is increased by 600% and when your Tempest Rush hits three or fewer enemies, it gains 100% crit hit chance. So now you can have double weapon in your Kanai's Cube and with Tempest Rush, you can see where the advantage lies here. So getting the increased 600% damage plus the Wan Kim Lao, plus Caesar's Memento, everything's looking really nice for this carryover of this new set into season 20 with the season 20 buff. So everything looks really good by adding the Wan Kim Lao and the balance. And then of course the jewelry, I already mentioned this, in order to run Captain Crimson's plus the Patterns of Justice, you will need the Ring of Royal Grandeur to make this build work. And all of a sudden you've got yourself one heck of a build. For your legendary gems, it should come as no surprise that there are gonna be two familiar faces, but of course Tega is one that will always fit into channeling abilities, getting that bonus damage plus the increased armor really helps you push that. And then of course Bane of the Stricken, always going to be in high greater rifts and then bane of the trap because you will be getting that aura buff around you getting that bonus damage so all of the three usual suspects when it comes to the legendary gems i can't stress this enough that when it comes to the general play style you cannot afford to have epiphany down when your ascension is down using that serenity making sure that you can be invulnerable in that downtime if you are pushing high greater rifts and you haven't balanced your serenity well, you will find those two to three seconds make surviving much more difficult. Again, there's always mantra of salvation. If you get caught in a situation, 
while that's on cooldown or while Epiphany's halfway through and you need to use Ascension and Serenity, that's fine. Go ahead and use it. But in that downtime, you can watch the bar as Epiphany starts to wear off. With that, Serenity is going to be the one that will save you while that finishes those last two to three seconds in that short downtime. Of course, I'm running at about 70% cooldown reduction, so there's only a minor overlap in that to where that happens. If you're running around 60% cooldown reduction, you will have a more difficult time, which makes this build a little bit harder to gear for, but once you get that cooldown reduction up, and once you get all the pieces in place, it does make things a lot easier, a lot safer. At that point, you start to go after specific rifts, at that point, you start to try and take more chances, try and fish a little bit, try and find the greater rift, try and group things up a little bit better because once you have everything in play and you can move around that, it works really well. You already have the mobility to get through targets with your abilities, so you don't have the dash that you would with other monk abilities. So you do have to play around that serenity a little differently if you're going up against certain mobs. And of course, there are gonna be certain elite mobs that you might wanna stray away from. But overall, this build has been one of the easier to runs once you get the gear for it. Of course, on the PTR, a lot easier to gear for. But once Season 20 goes live, this should be competing for some of the top spots on the leaderboard. But it will most definitely be probably the best monk build that we'll see. But if you want to make sure and subscribe, we will be keeping things up to date as Season 20 goes live for this class as well as other classes going into patch 2.6.8. So if you're looking for more Diablo content, be sure and subscribe as well. As always, I appreciate you guys watching. Till next time, happy hunting. See you again.